So in Skull and Bones, the weapons and armor have different tiers available. And in this video, we're going through how you can get the highest tier possible early and very, very easy. And when I say the highest tier possible, I mean, I have fire bombard tier threes. I have like standard bombard tier fives. And I've also got the Bastion three armor which has a rating of 340. I'm in the Padua Kang or the Bombardier. It's a tier five or rank five ship at base. And with the progress I've made using this method, I have managed to get it just over halfway through rank nine. But not only that, I have 135,000 silver at the same time. So in order to get your hands on a bunch of silver, the highest tier weapons, really high tier armor as well, what you need to do is you need to wait until it pops up on the left hand side of your screen saying that there is a cutthroat cargo hunt available. Then what you're going to do is join this and it is a PvP event. However, you're not always going to be involved in any PvP. In fact, nine times out of ten, for me at least, there is no PvP in this event at all. So when this event pops up and you join it, it's going to give you a random location on the map. You'll see it because the icon will be red, and what you want to do is make your way over to that location. And typically, I sit anywhere between 150 to 200 meters away from the treasure. And what's going to happen is when the timer is up and the event starts, there is going to be a treasure map that spawns. Now, to keep you as safe as possible, what I recommend is keep pressing your right trigger to pull up the event info and keep an eye on how many players are in the event. This one that you're seeing the footage for, it was literally just me. Nobody else ever joined this event. So once you've got the treasure map, you are going to have an outpost that is pinpointed on your compass, and all you have to do is make it over to the outpost, and the treasure is yours. You are not allowed in any safe areas, so if you go past, for an example, St. Anne, the moment you enter that safe area where you're not allowed to fire, you're going to drop the treasure map. So stick away from those areas and make your way to the uh, like pinpointed outpost where the treasure is. And make sure again while the event is running that you're pressing your right trigger or whatever button it is for you to pull up that information because it will let you know when players have joined. And if you are in possession of the treasure map, you are going to be able to see other players and exactly where they are on the map. It works the same if someone else is in possession and you've joined it to try and take a treasure map from someone, you're going to see exactly where they are. So this is going to give you the ability to like figure out your route and make a plan to stay away from enemy players. You will get some sneaky players every now and then that will fast travel to the outpost that you're going to and they will chase you down from there. But providing you're in the Padua Kang or something of a high level, you're going to pretty much be able to brace all of the damage they send your way and still make it through the outpost. And when you get to the pinpointed outpost, it will say that you're not able to disembark because you're in combat. But if you sit within the little like zone, sometimes even if you're still in combat, it will just pull you in. And then as soon as you are on land, the PvP part of the event is over. And all you have to do is just make your way to the treasure. So every now and then you might have a little bit of trouble with this event, but typically you're not going to have any at all. I have sat there and done this event over and over and over again, and I have never ever been sunk by another player. The most people I've ever had in the event is two without me, so three altogether. And I had both of them trying to get the treasure map off me, but I sunk one and managed to avoid the other and made it to the outpost. It's all about just knowing when to brace and how to avoid players as much as you can. And then when you are on the outpost, like when you're on land, all you've got to do is find the location of the treasure, dig up the treasure chest, and you are going to get your rewards. Now these rewards are so much better than other treasure maps you'll find in the game. For an example with this one, I got a Fire Bombard Tier 3. I've had two Bombard Tier 5s, I've had really high level armor, and this is all before I've even reached the required Infamy rank to unlock this stuff for myself. I'm currently sat at Corsair Infamy rank, and in order to get a Bombard Tier 5, you need to be cutthroat. So I don't actually have the capabilities of crafting these weapons, so I'm getting them earlier than I should. And on top of the weapons, you're going to get silver, 
And the first one I did of this event, I got like 9,000. But ever since I've leveled up a little bit, I've started getting anywhere between maybe 10 and 16 a thousand silver every single time. And that's exactly why I've got 135,000. So if you see that cutthroat cargo hunt event pop up, make sure you join it. Go and grab that treasure map, take it to the outpost, claim your goodies, because you are going to get some very, very good gear for your ship. As I said, I've gone from a ship rank of 7 to being over halfway through 9, and I have weapons and armor on my ship that I should not have because I'm not the required infamy rank for it. And what we're going to do is leave that video there. Let me know your thoughts and stuff about the ship progression in Skull and Bones in the comments. I will see you guys on the next one. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped you out. Thank you for watching.